Hey everyone, my name's Sebastian and welcome to Atmos Seeker. In this episode, I'm going to make a way to disguise the microfogger in some forest terrain. If you don't know what that is, it's this little guy right here. You can follow the links in the description or the cards on how to make one. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe. On the channel, I experiment with a lot of techniques for creating immersive tabletop gaming atmosphere and dynamic terrain and props. So let's go make this thing. The main body of this tree is made from this large cardboard tube. It's cut to be an inch or so taller than the microfogger and wide enough to keep it secure. To keep it from falling out of the bottom, I'm using some EVA foam cut to a diameter a bit wider than the fogger. Then I've cut a hole in the center for the fog to exit. I'm using EVA foam mostly because it's water resistant if there's any condensation from the fogger. The idea is that the mist is going to smolder out of these roots, so I'm just going to cut some arches into the bottom that'll make the main exits for the mist. For the base, I'm going to use some foam core cut a bit wider so I can continue some of the roots and make sure it's well balanced. To give the tree a bit more height, I'll just break up some of this packing foam and secure it all with hot glue. To give the tree a bit more character and direct the fog a bit more, I glued it in place on a slight angle. Now I'm going to add some branches using some of this florist's wire that's wrapped in this brown paper whilst twisting it with some of this thinner wire. This is all secured with some hot glue, which is what I'm going to use to create some of the roots and bark texture. To save on some hot glue, I'm bulking up some of these root areas with some masking tape. Now it's time to get to work on getting our bark and root texture going. It's okay if it's a bit messy, but just focusing on getting the general pattern and bark lines down. After we have some good coverage and that glue has cooled, I'm just running the nozzle of the glue gun up and down on those glue lines to rough up the texture. I have my glue gun set to a low temperature, so on thicker areas you may have to hold the nozzle there for a bit longer. It's time consuming, but the result is a bark-like texture that's extremely durable. After priming it with some medium grey matte spray paint, I hit the whole thing with some brown acrylic, taking special care to get into all the nooks and crannies. I'm using an airbrush here with some brownish orange to add a secondary tone, but you could just as easily use a brush and blend it with a darker brown if that color is still wet. To bring out that bark texture, I'm mixing a few colors to create some variation on the dry brush. Depending on the angle and pressure that I'm using this big makeup brush, it'll blend to different colors. Pull out the airbrush again with some bright green acrylic ink to tint some parts of the tree green. This creates some much needed variation to the colors of the surface. On the lower areas, I'm using a dark green wash, in this case some Methonian camo shade from Citadel, to create some dark recesses. Now for sealing it all in, I wanted it to be a bit tougher in case there was any residue from using the microfogger. I hit it with this durable furniture varnish, and because it came up with a bit of a satin finish after drying, I gave it a spray with the usual matte varnish. I'd also suggest this for any terrain in close proximity to the mist. So for the ground cover, I'm keeping it simple with some brown artificial moss and some reindeer moss from the craft saw. 
I've just mixed some together and attached it to the base with some hot glue. It's okay if you go beyond the base, this will blend it really well with any game surface you place it on. On the branches I'm going to go fairly simple by using some hot glue to secure some reindeer moss. This will create some foliage but won't be too dense to obscure table visibility. A final blast from the heat gun to get rid of any hot glue strands and it's ready for the table. The end result is a durable way to conceal the microfogger in some forest terrain with a magical effect. I've also made some trees using the similar painting and texture methods on paper towel rolls for a truly immersive forest. If you like how they turned out, hit that like button and if you want to see these trees in action, be sure to subscribe to not miss out on our D&D live play coming at the end of this month. As always, a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters at all levels, with a special thank you to Luke Mansberger, Chris Andrus, and Charisma and Command. Until next time, I'm Sebastian, and let's create and inspire.